members of the faculty and staff, it's my honor to be here with you today. Quite frankly, what I usually say these days, I'm happy to be anywhere, <laughs> any day, today. I've been very lucky, very fortunate, and Jada Whitley, I want to say I was very impressed. Where are you? There you are. I was so impressed with what you said because you said that one word is it, perseverance. Perseverance is still king. Persist until you succeed because you were not delivered into this world and defeat, nor does defeatism run through your blood, nor the blood of your ancestors. And so when I heard that, that was worth music to my ears to hear you say, if you remember one thing, remember perseverance. Because that's the name of the game. I remember reading a book authored by a noted historian, Theodore H. White, and it's called America in Search of Itself. And it symbolizes what I've always believed. He described the natural beauty of the land, the various sectors of the country, the mountains, the farmlands, the seascapes. And yet he point, pointedly makes the need for introspective improvements. And how many times have we heard the more perfect union described, as was described by Thomas Everson? We need to make a more perfect union. What was he suggesting? That it wasn't perfect. He was suggesting that we need to do more than what we are doing, that we need to reach down and pull it together. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an acknowledgment of truth. Every minute today when you turn on your television sets or look at your televisions, um, your phone telephones, bad news. There's not a minute that you don't hear bad news. What happened in Israel? What happened in Gaza? What happened in Ukraine? The threats that may be taking place in China relative to Taiwan. People crossing our borders in the thousands. It's almost like, oh, the world is coming to an end. Well, they've been saying that since the world was founded. But as Jada has said, perseverance is still king. Let no one ever, you graduates particularly, tell you that you can't do anything. That's what made me do it. Some of you can't do this. Say, what? <laughs> I can't? Why not? When my mother told me I could do anything I wanted to do if I put myself to it, my mother never told me anything wrong. And I know there are so many of you here today, particularly you graduates, who've had that same experience. People tell you, oh, you can't do that. Why are you wasting your time doing this? There are too many in that field already. Oh, well, they don't need any more of you. That's already loaded up. Well, there's always room at the top. And you get out of the way because that's where I'm headed. And for those of you who don't believe you can cut it and make it, do what Jada's told you. Open that door and take that drink. <laughs> and that drink is a drink of comeuppance. That drink is a drink of saying, yes, I can. This is no time for the wringing of hands and crying out in desperation because people are suggesting that we need to do it and cut it because if you look at our history, Events in the world today remind me of something that I read years ago. In life, you either plow new ground or you watch the weeds grow. Who wants to be surrounded and engulfed by weeds? Is this what Arthur O'Shaughnessy observed when he was saying, we are the music makers. We are the dreamers of dreams. We 
walking by the lone sea breakers, coursing the desolate streams, world losers, and forsakers for whom the male, pale moon gleams, and yet each age is an age that is dying or one that is coming to birth. This is no time for the wringing of hands and crying out in desperation. Dean Gooden has talked about Virginia being voted the best managed state in the nation two years in a row. She points out that uh, when I was governor, I created a rainy day fund. Well, she didn't tell you well, when I was governor, we were broke. <laughs> broke. When I went to call upon my good friend, my predecessor, to tell me what the status was, I was so happy, I've just been elected. Hey, I'm getting ready to kick it. And this is about this time of year, December. The election's been held. So I go to see my good friend. I say, well, all right, tell me how we stand, you know, with the, the bread, the bucks. Said, well, I, I'm not going to be able to leave you what I'd like to leave you. I, I understand all that. Tell, tell me what it is. Well, it's not what I want. Well, I understand that, too. How much money do we have? Well, I'm going to leave you $35 million. I said, no, I'm talking about the state budget, <laughs> state's money. $35 million to run the state? Well, you're talking about crestfallen. I was crushed. And yet, I said, oh, this is no time for despair. This is no time for me to go out saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. I said, well, we're going to cut it. What we're going to do is cut waste. We're going to eliminate waste. What we're going to do is make certain that we establish credibility and we're going to cut duplicity in government. We're going to streamline to the extent that we could. So when my first staff people would come in, my finance people would come in, they would say, well, we, 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 we got to get this budget straight. I said, first of all, let me tell you what you're going to do. We don't have any money. But I want you to go out and find ways for us to have $250 million because I'm going to establish a reserve fund. They call it rainy day. They said, this man's going crazy. <laughs> you want us to find $250 million when we don't have that kind of money? I said, you'd be surprised what you can find. I've been here a short while. I've been able to find that we have two Student loan offices operated full-time within six blocks of each other, right in Richmond. Why do we need two? I started finding other things in the budgets. I said, when you come back in next week, let me know what we got. Honey, when came back and they said, well, you know, you were right. We were able to find some money. We were able to do what you said, do. I know you're going to be pleased. We have found $75 million. I said, I am impressed with what you can do in terms of addition and subtraction. But you're short. I told you $250 million. Come back next week with the 250. They said he's going crazy. Well, sure enough, we went through some things, early retirement, eliminating duplic du duplication in offices, and we came back with the reserve fund. Every governor since that time has used it. But I put a caveat there, I said, when you take money out of it, you got to put it right back in as soon as you get a, a surplus. And that was done. There's no time for the wringing of hands, and yet I had members of my own party telling me, oh, no, you've got to raise taxes. I said, no, you are not going to raise any taxes. If you do, I'll veto it. We're going to do what we can do because you have not yet dug down, reached down. You can, you will ensure against that. And you graduates, you're going to be joining the ranks of leadership. 
where some of you already exist. You're not going out to lead. You're not going out to live. You're doing it now. You're going to embellish upon it. You don't have to run for office and get elected to do that, to, to demand what is right or to criticize what is wrong. Leadership is a tautology. It defines itself very simply. It means to lead, to be in front. It means to set example. And so let us all believe in certain things. Let's have better schools for our children, housing and health care for our people. Let us have safer communities in which we live. Let us remove those who purport to lead but waste our tax dollars by the millions. And I can tell you that that likewise can be done. You graduates of this school under the guidance and leadership of our esteemed and distinguished dean, Susan T. Good in our position to do what is necessary. Our faculty and staff have likewise shaped and prepared you for what is necessary to be done for your family. You are committed, you are ready, your community, the state, the nation expects you to do that expects you to lead, expects you to participate. And I would say congratulations to this class of 2023, but I would say to you, do it. Do it, because you can. God bless you.